feel kind of shame because I've just taken some moments this morning. A few announcements we need to make so that you'll know that we're not just worshiping on Sunday, that we're doing something seven days a week for the Lord in this church. I've said it many, many times over the years that the church ought to be open seven days a week. We haven't gotten there yet, but we're going to get there. One way or the other, one day soon. Soon and very soon, we're going to get there. We're going to ask Sister Mahone if she would come down at this time. She told me this morning she had an announcement. She wanted to make it. I believe we have a sense of what she's going to say, but it's always a joy. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm here this morning to make an announcement about the fundraiser, but I just feel like it's just so much more of my heart this morning. I need to share. I want to read this scripture that I just I can't get out of my mind. It's Matthew 7, verse 7. As seek not. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm thankful this morning and I, I know you see me praising and it's not because I'm sad or that I had a bad week. Amen. It's because I know, I know, I know, I know that when you ask God for the, the desires of your heart, He will make it be. Yes. And it's not up to us to, to find out and to know what His plan is. It's up to us to pray and to believe that it's going to be done. And I ask God, I've already prayed about this fundraiser. I've already prayed about things in my life. And I know that God is doing it right now. He's working right now. And that's why I'm praising this morning.
say something and she comes and I just feel that of the Spirit of the Lord to say it right now so that you'll be witnesses. I love movies as you well know. And, and there's a movie with Denzel Washington where he's a private in the army during the Civil War. And his commander asked a question. There's a young man that's carrying the flag. And the man says to him, or the commander says, if this man should fall, who will pick up this flag and carry on? Saying to you this morning so you'll know where my heart is. If this man should fall, hear me well. If this man should fall or get to a point where you can no longer pass through this church, this woman should be accepted as your pastor until such time as she sees fit to find a suitable replacement. I'm not asking for your approval. I'm asking for your amen. Because God has already set in motion the future of this church. Does somebody know what I'm talking about this morning? I'm not preaching and not speaking gloom and doom, but you see, you have to be ready. You have to be ready. And I don't want to leave you without a shepherd. So welcome the social pastor of this church. We're not looking for him to go anywhere soon, are we? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to stay the associate pastor for a long time. That's my belief this morning. But I'm so thankful that God is an awesome God. Is he not? Amen. He is. And he has a purpose for every life. And every one of you that is under the sound of my voice, God has a purpose for you. I was look, watching little Magnum up here. And I said to Sister Buchanan, and I'm going to introduce her in a minute, but I said to Sister Buchanan, he was standing up here in this pulpit, and I said, how do we know that we're not looking at a pastor someday? We don't know. We don't know. Amen? You don't know. When God saw David out in the pasture with the sheep, who would have said that man was going to be a king? Nobody. Not even Eve saw it. You don't know what God's going to do with all these little children out here. Amen? Amen? You don't know. God's got a purpose for each one of them. And I'm so thankful that we have started this church, started with children. You know that? Yeah. Pastor and Sister Carl started this church with just children. And then the parents started coming. Sister Wood, Sister Betty started coming. And that's how this church got started. We are supposed to minister to children. Not just adults, but to children. We're supposed to train up children in the way that they should what? Go. And that's one of the missions of this church. And I'm so thankful that God has put somebody in place to be the minister for our children. And then we have God put somebody in place to be the minister to our youth. And I'm thankful to be their overseer and their pastor. Sister Sharon Buchanan is the director of our children's ministry. Give her a hand. And it is a ministry to take your children every Sunday and go to children's church and teach them about the love of Jesus. That's a seed being planted in their spirit, in their hearts, that someday is going to reap a great harvest. I believe that. If I didn't believe it, we wouldn't be doing it. Amen? Amen. Sister Buchanan and Sister Ebony. Is Sister Ebony here? Would you two come? Sister Buchanan is our children's director. Sister Ebony is our youth director. Give her a hand. Amen? And Sister Buchanan. And now I'm going to let them tell you the rest of the story. Amen? Good morning, church. It is an honor to be in front of you this morning. We have some celebrations to do. We have two outstanding people who have now turned 
13. Praise the Lord. And at the age of 13 in this church, I get to hand them over or even kick them out of the children's department and say you can never come up again because you still beg me. But these two children have, excuse me, these two young preteens or teenagers have been very outstanding, very hardworking. They've grown a huge amount over the years since, since they were babies, since they started coming here. So at this time, before I call their children up, I'd like to ask Sister Penny to come up and Sister Marianne to come up. So if you haven't guessed, these are the two parents who uh, talk to me every time and say, what am I going to do with these boys? And I'm like, they'll grow up, look at the other one. <laughs> and I mean look at the other one. They'll grow up, they'll mature. And then I remember when Jonathan first came, and I had to, you know, you're going to sit down. You're not ready for this. And he looked at me. He's like, no, sit down. You're not ready for this. And each time, and he's grown. I don't have to tell him to sit down. I don't have to say you're not ready for this. He volunteers, and I'm very proud of him. Very proud of him. Jonathan, once you make your way up, yeah, come on back up. Our second, Jonathan turned 13 in July. Our second young man is a member of a group of four. And I am so happy that number three is out of my way. <laughs> Not because he's a pain, but because he's a pleasure. Sometimes he's too much of a pleasure. So at this time, if I can have Andrew to come up. Yes. Andrew will be, yes, give him a round of applause. I've told them both, you guys came together, you're going out together. Andrew will be 13 in October, so it's just one month away, so I got permission to go ahead and put these two together. And I'm so very happy at this time to present them with certificates of completion for Children's Church, signed by myself and Pastor G. And as a token of our love and appreciation, I have gifts of treats. This might be the last treat you get from me. Sister Evans said it will be. But knowing you guys, knowing how mature you are, and I'll go ahead and tease them. We've got sour patches in here. And I've got some nerves in here. And then probably their favorite, some flaming hot. But knowing them and pastor's role of not eating in church, I'm going to give this to mom. <laughs> to say for after church. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to give you a handshake. Great job. Great job. And I have now officially gifted you to Sister Ebony in the youth group. Let's give them a round of